Threats of attacks are issued by stakeholders in the Niger Delta, especially Delta State, over the support of the ban on open grazing in southern parts of the country. And Lagos State experiences an increase in insecurity as cases of robberies intensify. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. Tensions are high right now in Delta State as residents of Asaba, the state capital, received a threat letter by Fulani jihadists to attack the capital city if Governor Ifan Yokoa does not withdraw his support for the ban on open grazing in the southern part of the country within 72 hours. In response to this, the movement of emancipation of the Niger Delta MEND warned that Fulanese are or and their belongings would cease to exist if the jihadists make good on their threats. Now this comes as a 48-hour quick notice was issued by the Yoruba Youth Leaders Association to all Fulani jihadists to immensely or immediately, I beg your pardon, stop open grazing and remove their cattle from Delta Senatorial District. Mieti Alak um, has spoken also saying that the statement is coming from mischief makers who are out to tarnish the image of Fulanese. Well, a support party of issues and joining us to discuss this is Anne Keo Briggs, a Niger Delta activist, and Dennis Amakri, a former assistant uh, director of the DSS. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady, for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. All right. So um, I'm going to start with um, you, Mr. Amakri, because, I mean, this all of this is stemming from the um, this insecurity that we have been experiencing, not just, you know, in the Northwest, but it's spreading across the country. And, and, and the, the Niger Delta um, youth in Delta State have decided that um, they want to serve a quick notice to the people, the Fulanese who live in Delta State. But let's look at the, the um, legality of their statement. Do they have a right to tell the so-called Fulani jihadists, if there be any who are domiciled in Delta State, to leave the state? First of all, uh, thank you for having me here. I think that um, uh, the, uh, uh, the youths in Delta State should be very cautious because I think somebody is trying to lure them into uh, something bigger, a trap, so to say, because um, I don't believe in that particular leaflet that is flying all over the place. It has been uh, analyzed, and uh, we'll find out that, uh, first of all, you know, if Fulani jihadists don't uh, refer to themselves as Fulani jihadists, you know, and uh, for that note to be flying around, I think there's something fishy about that particular note. So they have to be very careful in analyzing it instead of carrying out uh, something that uh, we all will uh, start to worry about later. So you're telling me that you believe, because I was, I was going to ask that question, if this could be certain people taking advantage of the insecurity situation and the fact that their ethnic tensions also coloring, you know, this insecurities that was, say, um, you know, experiencing. The president did make mention of these sorts of people when he was giving his Democracy Day speech, saying that there are people who are hiding or flying under the radar to cause, um, you know, or perpetrate all kinds of violence and stoke the fire. Could these be the same sets of people Mr. President was referring to? Exactly. You know, there are people who really want this country to break up or who really want it to, you know, uh, gain more momentum in sliding down the hill that it is uh, sliding on and, uh, you know, cause more problem. Uh, anywhere they find out that it's uh, a bit quiet, uh, they try to raise some issues so that uh, the whole country will fall into uh, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, chaos. So I don't believe in that paper. Um, I know that the security agencies are trying to locate exactly who wrote it and who is the person. 
uh, so that you could prosecute the person. So um, I think we have to be cautious about these kind of people that are uh, all over the place. This is the season, and a lot of people are enjoying the chaos. Mm, interesting. Let me come to you, Miss um, Ankyo Briggs. Um, let's give a bit of a background to all that's happening across the country. Uh, the case of the ban on open grazing by 17 state governors uh, in the south of Nigeria, um, as against the other governors who have not said anything or kicked against it, this was the basis of the conversation in the first instance. And then Mr. President's um, live interview with, uh, on, on a rice television where he did say that he's totally in support of open grazing, and he gave the SGF, or the AGF, a mandate of sorts to reclaim the, the land for open grazing routes. Um, what does this mean, you know, when governors have taken a stand? Because also in the same breath, the president had accused state governors of sitting back and wait, wanting the federal government to do their job for them in terms of securing their states. Now, if state governors have decided to take this move of, uh, banning open grazing um, and deciding that this is what they want in the states and, and, the, and the president is opposing it. Is the president not talking from both sides of his mouth here? Good evening, everyone. Uh, the, uh, the reality is that uh, Nigeria is in a mess. Um, from, the, from the north of Nigeria to the south, to the east, to the west of Nigeria, um, Nigeria is in a mess, it's in a security mess. Um, the, the federal government itself is, um, has found it difficult to, uh, to resolve the mess that Nigeria is in. And this has led to, uh, uh, to where we are today. Now, going, uh, answering your questions, um, first of all, the, the president himself cannot say to Nigerians, that we should not be worried when we hear this type of threat. I do um, lean into the, uh, the thought and the thinking that uh, this may not be um, a real threat by, uh, by people who really um, uh, want uh, to, um, to, to threaten, if you like, um, Delta State, but the reality is that we do have situations where we have uh, an issue with jihadists in Nigeria. So when you hear this threat, you cannot say that people should not be uh, people should not be worried. On that uh, on that note, we can also say that the threat, the counter threat, if you like, that seem to have come from men. We should also say that that also should be. Uh, discounted because uh, it sounds also like uh, this is not from uh, uh, from the real from the real men. Now, a president of a country that is insisting that there must be open grazing um, and trying to force it on the states, and then coming around to say that he is going to support um, open grazing on one hand, and then this threat comes along on the other. It's a mess. It's a it, it, it's a mess that he himself is unable to uh, uh, to resolve. And while it is good for us to be comforted, and the, it is easy for us to say that this is not a real threat, we cannot run away from the fact that it may actually be a threat. We've had all kinds of threats um, from uh, um, uh, Fulani headsmen, from uh, Mieti Allah from all kinds of uh, people, known and unknown. So we have to face uh, the reality that Nigeria is in a, a security mess. And it must start with the president. The president is the one on whose table this issue is, and he has to resolve the, uh, the, uh, the problem well, the president, that Nigeria The president is, is not here, in. so I'm going to play the devil's advocate on behalf of the president, and I'm not a spokesperson for the president, so I'd just like to put that out there. The last time the president spoke before this um, Democracy Day interview and, you know, before he came to Lagos, the president spoke to um, INEC officials and he did say clearly, I remember playing that video here, that he has done his best. We asked for service chiefs to be chained. He has mm -hmm. done that. We, he has spoken and he has talked tough. So what else do we want him to do? And he's asked us to judge him fairly 
on, on how he has handled this issue. So again, I'm throwing it back to you because you're saying the book stops with the president. Well, I'm telling you what the president said. He's done his best. He's dealing with the situation. What else do you want him to do, please? Um, when, when anybody says they have done their best, it's, it's good for them to admit that they have done their best, but that best may not be good enough. And in this case, that is the way that it looks. It is not good enough. This president and this uh, uh, party came on board on the flyers that they are going to put an end to insecurity. Now, the insecurity that was on ground before they came and the level of insecurity that is on ground today that has swept across the north, has swept into the southwest, has come into the southeast and is moving into uh, the Niger Delta. Um, it's not good enough. And so whether he, has, he, he admits that he has done his best or not, it stops on his table. And right now, that best is just not good enough. Hmm. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Macri. There seems to be those who may have taken uh, the president's bits and pieces of Mr. President's statement on Democracy Day, uh, especially on the open grazing ban. There could have been some people who have taken it as a nod to continue to take laws into their hands, to continue to openly graze, uh, because you know the president seems to be the commander in chief and he has given a nod to open grazing. So they're damning, they seem to be damning the consequences or the, or the actions that might be taken on them by states. So do you see that, that this might just be another case that we will have to deal with in the coming days? Well, uh, the president himself has said it that the governors are responsible. And I think we have to hold it to that. Uh, because when you look at it, um, the governors have come out to say that no open grazing. Uh, I, if I remember very well, the president was referring to um, a law that uh, used to uh, be effective in northern Nigeria for open grazing and cattle routes. Those ones, have been cancelled out, I think. Uh... Oh, I think um, the internet just froze uh, Mr. Macri there. But let me go back to Ankyo. I think we'll come back to Macri to answer that question. But uh, Ms. Briggs, um, Mieti Allah, the spokesperson for Mieti Allah, was heard speaking today, um, reacting to that message that allegedly came from um, Fulani jihadist. Just as Mr. Macri said, a jihadist would not refer to himself as the jihadist, but they have said that the people in the Niger, uh, in Delta State should discountenance that message or whatever letter it was, being that um, Mieti Allah or Fulanese would not be making those kind of threats. But then in that same breath, he also um, kicked against the governors of the south or the southern parts of the country who have put a ban on open grazing. They are saying that that ban is not just a ban on open grazing, but they think that this is a, a, some form of a hate ban on Fulanese, uh, you know, going towards that area. What's your take? I mean, quite honestly, uh, they can't have it all. They cannot have it both ways. They cannot have their cake and also eat it or whatever the, uh, uh, the case may be. The reality is this. Um, they cannot deny um, a circumstances when it suits them and uh, I own it when, uh, when it also suits them. Uh, for them to, on the one hand, say that they do not agree with the statement, with the law that has been passed across southern Nigeria by the 17,000 state governors, that the, uh, that the president has told that they are in charge of their state and therefore should take care of security. And one of the things they have done is to say that no open grazing. Now, you can't uh, say that, uh, uh, that that is not the right thing for them to do. So for him to say, on the one hand, we should discountenance it and not worry about it, and then on the other hand, take the same posture of threat and the same posture of disregard for what the people of southern Nigeria and Niger Delta want, is not acceptable. I still maintain, and that is our reality today in the Niger Delta, that Nigeria is in a mess, a security mess. And all of us, all of us are victims of this security mess. And the people that seem to be um, on the right side of this mess is the uh, headsmen, the Fulani headsmen. You hear the army begging uh, Boko Haram to lay down their arms and come and take amnesty. I mean, come on, I don't, I don't know. 
What do we do? Because the truth is, um, there are Fulanese who have lived amongst us. For example, in Cross River States, they have a whole community and they have, um, they've married, you know, from the States and they, they have had children who have become part of that society. Can we just blanketly say that, oh, this is um, a Fulani problem? Yes, we know that the majority of them are herders. But how do we make sure uh, for states in the south and maybe across Nigeria that these people who genuinely live among us and do businesses with us do not become a target as they have become in the southeast? Well, I mean, um, unfortunately, this is a, a, a reputation that has started long ago. If you recall, um, there, are, there have been continuous times across northern Nigeria where um, people who do business legitimately in northern Nigeria that are from eastern, uh, the then eastern region and now south, uh, southeast and south south were targets not because of what they have done, but because some people just look at them and say that these are Nyamini people. These are problems that we have in Nigeria, and we just cannot use English to wipe away these problems. We have to sit down and begin to find solutions. Some of those solutions are in the calls that we've been making for decades that we should restructure Nigeria. And that in that restructuring, every state should be able to look after itself and develop itself so that we don't feel that we are, uh, we are less than anybody else and somebody does not feel that they are more than us. These are very unfortunate circumstances, but they are circumstances of life and death. There are circumstances of blood. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if Mr. Macri is back. Uh, would like to. Okay, I'd like to go back to you, Mr. Macri. You did not really finish answering my question when I asked about those who may may have mistaken Mr. President's not for open grazing to take you know certain laws into their hands. Just as you have said, these could be miscreants flying under you know the radar. But like I asked Ms. Ankyo, um, we we all are pointing out the problems. How do we bring solutions? Because again, like I said, there are some of these people who genuinely live amongst us and do businesses and they're nice and they're safe, you know, people, they do not carry guns or anything. How do we make sure that these people are not targets uh, from a security man's perspective? Well, um, when you look at the problems that we have in this country and then consider the threats that we have, you will discover that the politicians have been behind all these. You know, when I'm doing my threat analysis of Nigerian national security, I always put politicians because they are the ones that cause the problem for us. I know that uh, the fisherman in the Niger Delta does not have any problems with uh, the, the farmer uh, in Benue State. They don't have any problem. They might not even know each other, but the politicians go to the center and because of one failure or the other, we'll always come back to tell that, oh, I was, they did this to me because I'm a new payment, or oh, they did this to me because I'm a Fulani, or like that. So we have to watch that. And they have to look at it seriously. The country is at a crossroads. We are sliding down a very slippery lane. And meanwhile, instead of us to sit back and Take this major problem that we know, the problem of ethnicity, or should I say nationality, and address it. They are thinking of how to win elections in 2023. I can tell you this. If we don't solve this problem, I don't think they will be able to achieve their aim in 2023. So, but, but don't you think that we're aiding and abating? I'm sorry, don't you think that we're aiding and abating? Because you're making a very interesting point here. You're saying that politicians have taken advantage of the div divisiveness within our different sections in the country uh, to amplify our problems. Yes, but are we not aiding and abating? Because we're quick to t point fingers at our leadership. But what, what about the followership? Because I was somewhere yesterday and people kept talking about how bad our leadership is and how bad our politicians are. But they did not come from Mars. Did they come from Jupiter? They are from amongst us. So what are we doing as followers? Yes, are, are we not aiding and abating these they, kinds of activities? We are not aiding and abating. We are not aiding and abating. That's why we are called followers. You know, if the leader tells us, go left, we all go left. They tell, go right, we all go right. 
Is the so leader always the right? Is, is the leader must the leader it, always be right? Yes, you are a leader, but you could you might yes. sometimes not be right, even when you seemingly That's are a leader. That's why we're saying that the problem the problem has to be solved with the leaders because they are the problems. They are the one causing this problem for us. So if they get themselves on, because one of the other problems we have in Nigeria is governance. When they're not governing well and we are not. Uh, 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 leaning on the principles of justice and equity, then we will continue to have this trouble, you know. So the leaders need to get themselves together. Mm. Okay. Um, so let's talk about MEND quickly. I'm coming back to you, Ankyo. Um, MEND has, of course, like you said, have reacted to the threat and taken it personal. Um, what are we to make of these threats? And I will hope that Mr. Amakri can answer that too. Uh, or counter threats and the capability of it becoming a security problem. Because again, just as we are not able to ascertain the, the miscreants that are behind that letter, um, can we really um, ascertain who the people that are, that are claiming to be men are? And could this also be a problem that's breeding? How do we make sure that that's also shut down, not just by press conferences, but by security intel? Well, um, uh, very quickly, uh, when you come to the issue of insecurity, we've, uh, across the north, we started with um, Boko Haram, then we started with uh, ISIS and all of that, and then we had a uh, um, headsman. And up till today, the federal government and most of the governors in which states these people operate, Sometimes they interact with them and sometimes they don't know them. Now, coming down to the Southeast, you find a situation where there are insecurity in the Southeast and quite quickly they are able to find the people who they claim are perpetrating these insecurities in the, in the Southeast. Fine. Now, you come down to the, uh, to the Niger Delta and uh, there is a threat and then now there is a counter threat from men. Now, everybody in Nigeria, and most people who have done analysis and things like that, will not believe me if I say that I don't know anything about, about men. So, I mean, I am in the Niger Delta, and we know the story of men. And so, for us in the Niger Delta, when we see these counter threats that come from uh, men, so to claim, um, we, begin, we begin to wonder why it has become a story you know, because uh, when somebody else has made a threat, jihadists, and now we're being told they don't exist, or non jihadists perhaps, and then a uh, man makes a counter threat, it just shows that uh, violence or threat is not only one sided. Anybody can get up and make a threat, anybody can get up and, uh, and be violent. And that's why I keep throwing this back to the government. Mm. I don't see how a federal government that wants to control everything in Nigeria will now not want to control and get a grip of the security of Nigeria. They must get a grip. And if they can't get a grip, then they must allow us to, uh, to be able to, uh, to defend ourselves. Hmm. Interesting. Back to you, Mr. Macri. You are the security person here. Uh, so help us out. Just as I asked, uh, same question for you, but this time, does this not play down on the capabilities of our security agencies and governments in handling the situation? Because it's becoming, like she said, it's become a free-for-all, a play of words. And, you know, anybody can issue a threat and a counter-threat. What does this make of our country and our level of insecurity? I know that we have insecurity, but then we have governments, we have security agencies. Where is all of the intel? Where is all of the security that we are hopefully... Um, paying for like i told you the intel we have in this country is first class because i know what are we doing with it then but 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 you know that's what i'm saying but you have to realize that as i also mentioned we have a serious deficit in governance because when governance is not showing itself to be uh, leading on the side of equity and justice, then you start having all these problems, you know. And I can tell you this, we, uh, the security agencies in the country must have lost their, uh, lost the initiative. And that's why you have 
uh, regional security issues coming up like Amoteku, uh, Ibubago, and the rest, is bad and all. Now, the thing is that the government have to take back that initiative. If they don't, everybody will be going ahead and trying to defend themselves. And you see that when the headsmen will leave their traditional area and go all the way down to Delta uh, to threaten a fight, and uh, or you find out people asking some other people in the West, the Southwest, to leave, then you find out that we are in the real mess, like uh, Antio is just saying. And it's, that mess can only be cleared by good governance and they can start now. I don't think it's late. It's not late at all. But you have to address the issue. If you don't address the issue, then it will fester and blow into something else that we don't expect. Thank you. How serious and how uh, um, sure does it seem that our leaders, even us to people, are ready to have that conversation or deal with this you know, um, hydra-headed monster called insecurity. Does it seem that it's even within the grasp of our leaders to give us good governance in the first instance? Or even have that uh, conversation of devolution of powers, of restructuring? We hear it being bandied every other day, but are we really ready to sit down and have that conversation and implement every single word to the latter if we do? Well, we better be ready. I mean, it's one or the other. It's either we're ready to have a conversation that will resolve the issues that has been on the table, or then we are not ready, and therefore we are ready for the other, which is that we, whether we like it or not, um, this will get worse, and it will get messier, and um, um, it's just unimaginable uh, what, uh, what can be the fallout uh, of this. All I'm saying is that both the electorate and the people that we are electing and presenting themselves better be certain and know that this is, is not going back. We must resolve this matter. We can't just wake up and find ourselves back in 2015 or 2014. We are in a mess and it must be resolved. And the only way we can resolve it is to discuss it. Let everybody come up. Look, we cannot run away from the fact that we are nationalities and everybody is recognizing their nationality. I've always known whom I am. And so therefore, I cannot tell somebody else not to recognize who they are. The government, all government, all the state governors, the federal government, everybody needs to know what is at stake. It is the future, it is the lives of our, our people that are at stake. We're heading for destruction. Okay. Well, when you put it that gloomingly, uh, there's cause for worry. Well, Ankil Briggs, Niger Delta activist, and uh, uh, Dennis Macri, former DSS boss, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for having me. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we discuss the rising rate of robberies in Lagos. Do you live in Lagos? Have you had an experience? Join the conversation. We'll be right back.